Hey, it's Brent from the White Lab Workshop. Today's project is another fun one that's great to work on with kids. It's a finger hockey board game that I got the plans for from Jameson, the rogue engineer. I first saw this game at the store and it looked like a ton of fun. Let's get to it. The plans call for a 1x2 frame and I had some pine 1x2s laying around waiting to be used. So I got to work cutting them up. Three pieces at 15 inches and two pieces at 20 inches. Next, I set my blade height for three quarters of an inch and made a bunch of passes to cut the notch in the middle of the center board. For the base, I used one quarter inch hardboard from the home center. I bought a 4x8 sheet and had them cut it down into 2 foot by 4 foot sections for easier handling. I took one of those sections and cut two bases at 16 and a half inches wide. I then turned them and cut each one to 20 inches long. For the pucks, I bought a piece of one and a half inch oak dowel. I pulled out the crosscut sled again and set up a stop block to cut half inch sections. I made sure to use a removable block to help size the cut, then took it away for the actual cut to keep that cutoff section from getting pinched between the blade and the stop block and turning into a slap shot. I cut 20 pucks and they now needed to be sanded, so I recruited a couple of my daughters to do it for me. I mean help me out. Unfortunately, they're smarter than I am and each one came up with something more important that they had to go do. So I ended up finishing them up myself. Next, I drilled the holes for the bungee cord to fit into. With my daughter still occupied with some bogus, more important thing to do, I got to work sanding the frame pieces. I then went the extra mile and used my chisel to clean up the notch and make it more flat. To assemble the frame, I glued the ends of the short pieces, then used inch and a half finishing nails to tack them in place. I was delighted to see one of my daughters show up again, so I put her to work helping me glue the frame to the base. This build was kind of a trial to see if we'd like the game, so I didn't bother applying any finish. If you're going to pretty it up, apply the finish before you glue the frame to the base, and stay tuned for our findings with this trial version of the game. For the bungee cord launchers, I found a two pack of 20 inch bungee cords at the local hardware store. I cut one end off at 16 inches and took the hooks off. Then I melted the ends to keep them from fraying. What you don't see here is me rubbing my fingers on a wet piece of paper towel before forming the melted ends to keep them from burning my fingers in the process. My partner in crime then helped me run the bungee cords through the holes in either side and tie it off. This was a bit of a cluster, but we pulled it off. Then it was time to take it for a test drive. The rules are pretty simple. Start with 8 to 10 pucks per side and be the first player to get all the pucks on the opponent's side. 
And here's a pro tip. Watch those fingers. Oh. Ah! By the time of this recording, we've played this game a bunch and I can say definitively that it's piles of frantic fun. However, we did learn a few things to tweak for the next one. First, the plans call for the bungee holes to be drilled a half inch from the bottom, but this put the bungee cord a little too high for us. We had to re-drill the holes lower to get the cord to line up with the pucks a little bit better. I'd say a quarter of an inch ought to do it. Second, the pine frame with the oak pucks has taken a beating. Pine is a softwood and oak is a hardwood, so there's always wood flakes that break off and lots of little dents around the slot. For the next one, I'll be using oak for the frame too, for a little more durability. And for the gameplay, don't be afraid to switch up the number of pucks in play. 8 to 10 to a side is crazy fun, but fewer can be just as fun with a little less chaos. We also tried what we call shootout mode, with one or two pucks to a side for lightning rounds. Well, that's it for this one. If you like this video, consider hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel. We've got a lot more projects of various sizes queued up and would love to share them with you. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time.